Hello everyone, this is Ross at Teacher Talk, the most influential blog on education in the UK. Today I am delighted to be joined by John Smedley of Teach Active, which I'll introduce to you who in a moment. Um, Teach Active is an online resource tool providing teachers with lesson plans and resources which to deliver primary maths and English curriculum through physical activity. And I've been very proud to work with Teach Active through the kind of latter ha half of uh, 2020 and early 2021 to share some of their brilliant resources with you. So um, this week I'm with John. John, uh, hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, very good, thank you. Yeah, just enjoying uh, the bank holiday weekend. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Could you introduce yourself to our listeners and tell everyone what your role is at Teach Active? Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, as Ross said, uh, my name is John Smedley and I'm the founder at Teach Active. Um, taught for 20 years, which maybe perhaps we'll talk about. So I was an advisory teacher for PE, for physical activity. Um, went back, I was a deputy head for many years and then left in 2015 in order to kind of set Teach Active up. Uh, which uh, at that point was just myself and now there's a, there's a team of uh, nine of us based here in Chester. So, so you've you've earned your teaching stripes. We can we can safely say. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what I like to do with people I, I, I kind of interview is just unpick their own little education story. So, um, could I get you to describe yourself, uh, your sixteen-year-old self, to listeners? Sixteen-year-old <laughs> um, self, probably sport mad. Um, loved sport, loved physical activity. Played everything at school. Uh, represented the you know, the county in a few sports, but um, and yeah, I liked school, but probably more for the, the social side than anything else. Wasn't particularly yeah. the most academic, uh, but always wanted to be a teacher. You know, I used to uh, coach a, a lot of tennis to, you, you, to children, and I think that gave me a kind of love of wanting to go into teaching. Um, so after A levels, then went to, to Chester University to do the four year B Ed program. Fantastic. Can I can I put you pin you down for a, a specific year you started your teacher training? Oh, 1996. Yeah. Okay, uh, 1996. So that good old fashioned four year B Ed degree where you go exclusively to want to be a teacher. Um, something that plucks my heartstrings, John. I did the same. Um, were you a kind of person that did all your assignments on time or were you a last minute dot com type person? Um... I was probably, uh, I can't remember, but I was probably a last minute dot com if I was really honest with you. And I came out of uh, university with a 2-2 degree, um, if I should admit to that. But I, I actually, you know, in terms of all my teaching practices, I was always getting ones and, and outstanding regards to that. So it's why when the government said that you needed a 2-1 to do a PGCE, I didn't necessarily agree with it because... I might have not been the best at writing assignments, but actually trying to inspire kids was, well, I, I, was something you know, that I could I, do. I think we should all agree that we want qualified teachers. I think you know, putting people under certain pressure to have a certain grade is another one. I think you know, if we, we excluded a lot of teachers for specific grades to get on degree courses, we probably wouldn't have half the teachers that we um, currently have, I think. Um, I, I'm also one of those. Um, could you describe some of your memories from your teacher training placements? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, lots of fond memories. I, I enjoyed all of them around. I was at Chester, so all around kind of uh, the Chester area and on the, on the Wirral. Um, just working in some really uh, deprived areas, and I think I really enjoyed that, you know, really helping children who had a tough home life, who didn't have much help, and, and really you know realizing that teaching was a lot more than just teaching subjects but it was mm -hmm. it was self-esteem and confidence and, and looking after the the whole child as well and that was something I, I kind of made me want to then teach in those type of areas when mm. I graduated. So uh, I know qualifying to become a PE teacher obviously you've got that love and interest already but at what point did the kind of physical curriculum start to become a conversation with yourself? Was that in your life as a school leader? Um, it was when I was the advisory teacher for PE. Uh, so I'd been teaching for five years. I was seconded to the local authority and supported, uh, you know, 100 primary schools. And I remember my boss, who was the director of PE, a guy called Bob Saunders, great guy. Um, he walked into the office and he said, John, there's a school, Townfield Primary School, their, uh, their maths results are really poor. The children really 
attitude support, attainment support. Mm -hmm. I want you to do something about it because they love physical activity. And I kind of thought, Ross, well, you know, I actually thought to him, well, go and talk to the maths advisor. But, you know, he was my boss and, and, and school was a local authority. You did what they were. So I actually started going in and teaching each week maths, but through physical activity um, right. to really try and engage those children and turn their uh, attitudes around to, to the subject. Now, I'm just reading your, you know, how we started story on your blog. And, uh, you know, I was having a little nose through your website, which I've been doing over the last few months, but a deeper look before we chatted this morning. There's a lot of great ideas and resources on there, but that story about how you started at Townfield Primary School is a, a, it's, it's, you know, historically a romantic story. It's a real story. And I guess that's uh, the experience for most of us is that you develop something you really love you're then asked to go and share your wisdom with others. And then you kind of unlock this whole um, kind of uh, corridor of progress, I suppose, for want of a better term, um, you know, but specifically math through PE. Um, so where, where is it taking you today? You know, fast forward, uh, you know, 13, 14 years. We now have Teach Active. You've got a, a small team around. You tell us uh, the Teach Active journey. Um well, I mean, the funny thing is that that conversation that happened all those years ago, I didn't realise that years later I'd be running a business just doing exactly that. But um, yeah, I went back into school as a deputy head into a school that uh, similar circumstances, you know, long story short, uh, we mm -hmm. shared it with a lot of schools locally. Um, it was in a sharing of good practice paper through Ofsted. It was in a DfE international project. And I just thought, well, actually, yeah, I, I, children absolutely love this. So let's take it from a file of ideas that can be shared locally to a, an online resource, which today has three and a half thousand lesson plans on how to teach the whole of the English and the mass curriculum, but through, through movement and through getting children up and about and active. So, so your, your impact's wider than that. You know, you've got X number of lesson plans on there, but you've got a lot of schools signing up and uh, i guess if we replicate the number of pupils i guess your impact on pupils is is quite significant Can you give us some yeah. general statistics yeah it was something that we're really proud of i mean we we we've got good data systems here so we can see how many teachers we've trained how many lesson plans are getting downloaded uh, it gives us an indication of, of, of you know, rough estimates and ox approximations for children. And we think probably 300,000 children every wow. week are benefiting from, from Teach Active lessons. Um, and that's what I was probably being quite conservative, really, with the amount yeah. of plans that are getting downloaded. So if I'm, a, um, if I'm a primary teacher listening to this, and I don't know much about Teach Active, if, I, if we were in our lift going up to the sixth floor, what's your lift pitch? How would you sell it to me? <laughs> Uh, I'd just look at the, the four benefits, which I think all teachers love, you know, I'd say we want to get the, the it gets children more active, uh, it raises attitudes, uh, it raises attainment, uh, and it develops the whole child. So um, as a teacher, I think it, it takes, you know, we want children to love learning, we want them to do well in English yeah. and maths. But we wanted them to do it with self-esteem and confidence. And now, it's also a good, um, you know, as ever, these resource platforms, they're a great workload strategy for uh, our teachers out there. So, you know, what kind of things would it benefit me as a teacher? And could you just maybe emphasize that I don't necessarily need my school to sign up? Can I play around with the resources as an individual? Yeah, as an individual, you can go on to the Teach Active and just sign up for a free trial. You'll have access to, to uh, you know, 50 lesson plans and foundation stage to year six. Um, and, and you can just have a good go and, and see if it's something that your children and, and your class really enjoy and then feedback to the rest of the staff. Now, I'm going to switch hats. I'm a, a cynical school leader. I've got a little bit of budget in reserve and I'm looking for a curriculum kind of bank of resources, um, you know, maths, P, those types of things from a primary school. Um, what's going to push me over the line? You know, what are the kind of frequently asked questions concerns thoughts that you hear from school leaders to help tip them over the line about the benefits of teach active i suppose that people want to know is it airy fairy and just good fun is it just we've got children running around with a smile on their face and and, and actually we lose the objective and the outcome but all of our lesson plans are written by maths and english consultants mm -hmm. who will say to you actually this will improve standards in english and maths um, so physically active learning, just because we're up and about, doesn't mean we're missing out on learning. We're just doing it in a bit of a different way. And 
you know, the amount of case studies, uh, data impact that we've got. Teachers listen to teachers and, you know, we've got uh, mm -hmm. you know, a thousand plus schools in the UK alone who will testify to the difference it's making at their school. Now, now I was going to ask, um, you know, if I was a teacher, maybe listen to this overseas, you know, maybe out outside of the British system, but maybe following the British curriculum, could I use it? Um, and have you got other examples of teachers beyond the world of a primary school using it? So maybe parents, maybe school people working in special uh, needs settings or early years? Yeah, so the, the every Teach Active school, there's also a, a free um, homework element to it as well, so that parents can access it. It used to be Ross as a nice little added extra over lockdown. It went absolutely balmy, as you can imagine, with the amount of mm -hmm. uh, downloads there. Um, we have quite a few international schools coming on board now through word of mouth, which is great. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, yeah, it's mainly a primary school product, but, uh, you know, we've got secondary schools that you were using as with transition uh, with year seven SEM children. And we've got a lot of um, secondary special schools where perhaps the children are still working at key stage one and key stage two level. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really supporting that as well. Now, we've done some work in the past together uh, with Steve. I remember when we had a, a little live session with teachers and we're, we've got one coming up soon with Ben. Could you, um, I'm really interested with Ben's story, you know, the Wellbeing School of the Year. Could you tell us a little bit more about his work and how Teach Active maybe supported that? Yeah, uh, so Ben Levinson, Kensington Primary School, he's the uh, Primary School of the Year and the TES Mental and Health Wellbeing School of the Year. And they've just really put health at the heart of their curriculum, as his case study is called. And he wants to ensure that um, perhaps some of the challenges that he's got at his school, he believes that a physically active curriculum can really support that in, in building up his children um, and, and really putting the, the centre of the child at the heart of that curriculum. And physical active learning is a huge part of that. And they use um, active maths and active English uh, you know, daily with, across their school. And it's something that's had a huge impact into attitudes mm -hmm. and attainment. Um, and you, you'll know that I'm a big fan of trying to make workload life for, uh, easier for teachers. Um, what are the kind of things that you've seen throughout the pandemic? You know, you've seen a huge spike in people using your resources. So, you know, what are your kind of most popular or what are the ones that people go to the most? And I know we're under an umbrella of physical learning and math, so to speak. So there'll be some common themes, but any any insights that you can share with us? Yeah, I think, you know, again, I always say that the credibility factor of me being a teacher for 20 years, I say this isn't going to be something that your teachers will not enjoy. They're going to welcome it because it saves them hours of planning time. And, and that's mm -hmm. what teachers tell us. Um, we've highlighted all the plans out of the three and a half thousand that are COVID bubble safe. So can be uh, still continue meeting government guidelines, if you like. And a lot of those uh, will be uh, taking opportunities to take learning outside, which is a great thing to do at the moment, especially in the summer term, um, when perhaps that socially distancing is really easy um, to achieve and when we can get out and get fresh air, which is, you know, we know from governing bodies is, is something that's recommended as well. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to switch hats and put my parent hat on. I've got a nine-year-old boy here at home uh, who's a bit more obsessed with um, his switch and Rocket League rather than uh, maybe doing a bit of physical exercise with his mum and dad. And to be fair, though, you know, he is enjoying the odd outdoor walk during COVID. Um, what tips would you have for parents in general? You know, if I wanted to dabble with your resources, log in, have a play, uh, how would it benefit me as a parent not just through the pandemic, but long term as well. What what kind of things can I? Uh, what would what things would I find and find of most use? Okay. I mean, I'm a parent of two primary school age children myself who who love the PlayStation and the iPads and everything else and uh, everything in moderation, as we'd say. But I, I think you know people have different views of homework, and, and what I try to create is to say, well, if if we're going to give homework, then rather than it be sedentary and sitting down at the dining room table and doing more, 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 well, mm -hmm. let's play a game and an activity with, either with a sibling or with mum and dad. And something that, um, you know, we've all probably had that occasion when, you know, I'm trying to get my son to do, do his homework and he's, he's disengaged and it's actually, it's, it's actually creating a, a loss of love of learning with his maths rather than making him enjoy the subject. And that's why our simple, fun games are, 
uh, are really there to help. So yeah, if we, I know the kids might rather be on the, the Nintendo Switch, but if I've got to do homework, then actually this is a nice mm-hmm. alternative and, and something I think, oh, actually, I really enjoy this. Now, I'm going to... Um... I'm going to test your expertise. I'll, I'll show sure you'll find this a doddle, but um, I'm going to give you two scenarios and I want you to tell me how Teach Active Resources could help. So your first scenario is a uh, pandemic. I'm a, a parent in a maybe a sixth floor flat with no, no garden. How could I get my children physically active through your kind of maths curriculum English resources? Okay, so all of our plans are written for the parent plans for whether you live in a flat or live in a five bedroom detached house with a huge garden. So we could simply be, I mean, in, in a flat, you can maybe even go outside for a moment, go up the steps and start doing your times tables as we're going up around them. We could get a balloon and, and play balloon tennis and do our times tables as we're doing it through that as well. So we, we, we don't need huge amount of space in order to do any of the activities. Okay. Um, we go outside, but we don't need it. Another scenario, I've just been given a cover lesson. It's a PE lesson, but the hall's been used for exams and the school has no playground space. Um, what would I do in that scenario? Okay, well, we're in the classroom, no problem. It's just uh, what we look at is non-sedentary behaviour. So sometimes it's just bums off seats. So it's not going to be a vigorous lesson, but we're mm-hmm. just going to get rid of our chairs. We're going to be around the table and we're going to use a going around Robin and visit different tables where there's going to be a different activity where we might be sorting and, and, and working with numbers or fractions, whatever it may be, um, and moving around just non-sedentary, just not sitting down. Very good. Well, oh, you've passed my scenario test. So uh, no, I, I, I'll, ask, I'll ask kind of deeper question, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, the cognitive science, the research on education, mental health, well-being, we know is important. Could you signpost listeners to some kind of key pieces of research which kind of suggest that, you know, being physically impact on people outcomes across the school? Um, you know, what, what research could you signpost us to? What could we read uh, tip those school leaders over the line with the decision? I mean, the, the one thing I would say is that there is so much um, research and so much data now with regards to the, the, the difference in the impact between, uh, you know, being physical and physical active learning and, and brain and, and the memory and, and concentration. To give you a few, I mean, Google, you'll find lots and if people want to come to me directly um, on our news page on the Youth Sport Trust. There is something at the moment called the Creating Active Schools Framework, which um, with a team in Yorkshire and a guy yeah. called Andy Daly-Smith, which is really interesting and fantastic. I'd have a good look into that. Um, there's a guy called, or gentleman called Dr. William Bird. Um, in particular, you may see one of his videos on YouTube called um, Movement is Life, which again mm-hmm. is really based about the, the difference and in, in the impact that it can, that it can have. Um, and you know, uh, uh, just those guys are, are, are alone in terms of uh, the impact that it can have is quite significant. Now, um, some breaking news, I suppose, is you've just uh, made it to the final of the Education Resource Awards, haven't you? Could you tell us a little bit more about that and what that means? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been very lucky. We've won lots of awards, and, and they are something which are great. Um, I love schools telling schools how great Teach Active is, but awards are always lovely. The uh, Education Resource Awards for um, the classroom, re- uh, sorry, the uh, resource of the year and also for supplier of the year. And then mm-hmm. we've also become, uh, we've just had news that we're in the finalist of the BET Awards as well, which is always nice. And congratulations. Yeah. And, and one last thing I want to unpick, the, uh, your work with the Parliamentary Review. What Tell us a little bit more about uh, what was involved there. Yeah, so we were uh, uh, approached um, to be part of the government's parliamentary review um, just for outstanding practice in education. It came about of one of our schools, Steve Tyndall and the Holy Family, where the school went from national averages with their maths results to the top 5% of maths results nationwide. And that was picked up uh, by DfE and then subsequently government. So um, it was lovely to be part of that, again, spreading the good uh, word to other schools and uh, a nice visit to the House of Lords as well. Yeah, to, uh, very uh, nice. As part of that, which was nice. <laughs> great, um, great work out there, and uh, you know, lots of good work by your good self. So, um, John, you'll you'll you may or may not know that after the twenty minute back, um, 
to kind of wrap things up for listeners and then i uh, pose some quick fire questions to you to try and catch you out and see if we can catch you off guard uh, and you know after a bank holiday kind of wake our brains up in some respects so uh, i'll start off easy with you what project is on your desk today what are you working on um, uh, looking at um, the early years the new early years framework and updating all of our active uh, plan or active uh, maths and english plans to in, in with that so a nice easy one <laughs> yeah no small job there um how did you look after yourself during the pandemic physically uh, I converted my garage into a gym, which was, a uh, you know, most people did DIY projects. That was mine. And I actually started doing um, Pilo- uh, yoga ability, um, right. which I'd say if you haven't had a look at, have a look at yoga ability. Uh, yoga ability. A lady called Alex Donovan, who plays rugby for uh, Wales and uh, is fantastic. Yeah. On Instagram, I was, uh, I started doing a bit right. of that. All right. Well, have a look. Um, what book are you reading? Um, I am reading. Let me think. It's uh, it's a it's a book that I was bought by Will, who was my other colleague. It's uh, golf is not a game of perfect, which is about the psycho because I'm a golf player. Uh, the psychology behind golf. Um, oh, I'm right. also reading the Five AM Club by Robin Sharma, which is about why we should get up at five AM in the morning and smash uh, the day. Crikey! Um, are you, were you a better maths teacher or a better PE teacher? Ooh, probably P to start with, and that's uh, <laughs> caught up, I'd say. What's your golf handicap? No, 18. It needs 18. to come down. <laughs> um, if, if you weren't doing your dream job now, what's that abstract job you would have liked to have had when you were growing up? Uh, if it wasn't a professional sports player, which I would have loved, uh, I think maybe either journalism or photography. I'll go for Okay. Um, yeah, I want to take you back to when that moment you thought, right, I n- need to step out of the classroom full time and do a sideways move, you know, to start Teach Active. Uh, could you just briefly highlight some of the key decisions that you made for teachers who think, you know, I guess that fear of is there a life outside of teaching? Um, kind of what, what, what were the kind of key messages or methods that you used to make that leap? Um. Yeah, there was a bit of anxiety there. You know, obviously, I, I had a very good job and a secure job. So I, I kind of just thought if I don't do it, I'll always regret it. And that was my one. I, I did a lot of the I did the two jobs side by side for yeah. one another for a little while until I felt comfortable for the leap. And then I just thought, you know, that had to be the over. I'm so passionate about it that, you mm. know, let's go for it. And I always thought, you know, if I'm not going to lose that skill set. If it doesn't work after six months, I, I can go back. But luckily, um, simple, I loved my job. I always did. But luckily. Yeah. Um, I, so what would I, be I your top tip? If we put your kind of business hat on, what's your top tips for running running a business? Um, I'd say surround yourself by good people, work with good people. That's always been for me. You know, I, I, I set up this business with two other guys um, and so there's three directors. And I think that um, and, and now we've got a really good team and that's that supports, you know, the, the growth of the business, but also my well-being and, and customer service to schools, which is really key mm. to us. If we had, uh, well, I'm, I'm due to come over to your neck of the woods in the future, but if we had 24 hours together, what, what would we do? Where would we go? What would be the kind of things to see in your part of the world? Ah, great answer. Well, um, I actually, even though the office is in Chester, I live in North Wales, so we've got everything on our doorstep. So we'd probably go for, if you're up for it, Ross, we'd probably go for a bike ride along the prom and all the way to land don't know and then we probably uh, have some lunch there and then we'd go to snowden and i'd take you on the longest zip wire in europe uh, I've and, seen that, maybe, yeah, look. <laughs> uh and then maybe we could go for a walk along the lovely north coast uh, right, Wales very well. nice. um, so when i when i do come to your office in a kind of safe social distance way in the future uh, what 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 am i going to be surprised about most about the teach active team and setup What's most exciting? Uh, I th- I'm really proud of our team here. I think that um, we've got a small, but a, a, a great team, and, and we, who all 
Um, like the purpose and the mission of our uh, of, of our company, you know, we we want to work in collaboration with people. We want to help schools, support schools, support teachers and children. And I think you'll get a feeling of that from the staff that we have here. Okay, um, nearly done there, John. Um, if you could recommend I interview someone next, who would it be and why? Oh, I'd definitely say uh, Ben Levinson, but we're, uh, you, you've got him on board already, haven't you? Um, I would say uh, a guy called Ben Smith, who did the 401 challenge, which is 401 marathons in 401 days, and is a real inspirational story about how physical activity saved mm -hmm. his life, actually. So, okay, I'll, I'll check you, out I'll Ben Smith. Look at him up. He's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one last maths question for you. Um, could you explain what a hypotenuse is for listeners? <laughs> no. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, um, uh, final question then, I suppose. Um, where can listeners find out more about Teach Active, you know, social media website addresses? Uh, yeah, okay, so we, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, but um, just look at us on the website. And from there, sign up for a free trial or you can sign up for a one-to-one -one demo with myself. And I look forward to maybe showing you the resource and talking you through it. So there you go, everyone. Teachactive.org forward slash free hyphen trial. Um, one last question, John. Squeeze it in. Uh, what do you hope to be your legacy? Um, to have impacted on millions of children and... Um, really giving them a help, help them to have a love of learning in, in particular in English and maths and, and lifelong love of keeping active. So thank you, John. There you go, folks. Um, Teach Active, John Smedley, do check it out. John, thank you for your time. Thank you for the amazing work that you're doing, the, the incredible impact you're having on our young people. Um, fingers crossed you get another 10,000 schools sign up over the next couple of years and you're super busy and much big, bigger and uh, making a big difference to the teaching of primary and hopefully we can get a secondary version of you soon in the future and we can start to influence curriculum at key stage three perfect thanks ross thanks for your time and i look forward my pleasure to john speaking soon. take care thanks everyone thanks for listening bye for now